God, amen. And, um, and, and this, just, uh, just listen and, and communicate with God and have this dialogue. And, and God just used to just allow, you know, just tell him what to do. And, you know, he's, he's reading all over the Old Testament. But it seems like it's, it's a, the growth started and started invading this world. And uh, it just seems harder and harder for men to, to hear from God. Amen. And uh, it's important that we recognize that uh, there is a preparation that needs to be, take place, you know, uh, so that we can get to that place where we can clearly hear from God. And not doubt, amen. So when, when he calls, amen. He just he just happened overnight. There is a preparation that must take place. Amen. And uh, uh, here now in, 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 in the book of Acts, uh, in chapter 9, uh, uh, we see how Apostle Paul, he already um he, he you know he finished with Stephen, amen. He put him to sleep. He put Stephen to sleep. And, and, and he was just giving the church a hard time, just prosecuting every saint and everybody they proclaim to to to, uh, to follow God, Amen, and to obey God, Amen. And uh, and we 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 know that, that those who live for God shall suffer, suffer persecution, Amen. And and and, and there's uh, this this other town, uh, Damascus. You know, it's a, it's a it's even to this day it's a it's a, it's a famous city over there in Syria. And, uh, and most of the Christians, they flee, flee over there. You know, they're you know, running over there to Damascus because uh, Apostle Paul, he, he, well, at that time, he was Saul. He was just giving the church a hard time. He was persecuting the Christians and just uh, putting them to sleep. <laughs> Amen. Putting them in jail. And, uh, and, and, and now it wasn't enough with just uh, he persecuting the Christians over there in Rome. Now he wanted to, he went uh, to the high priest to ask for letters to for permission to go over there to, to go after this Christian. Amen. To wherever they went, they, they, they he wanted to go after them to Damascus. You know, to, so they could uh, he could uh, keep on prosecuting them over there. <clears throat> but something happened in, uh, when he was in the road to Damascus. He had an experience that he changed his life. Amen. He turned it all the way around. Amen. And uh, he came to the light. Amen. To the light. Christ himself presented himself to him. Amen. And, uh, and, and well, we you know that he fell from the horse and then he he, 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 were, he was blind uh, for three days. Amen. And this tree, the number three, is represented uh, the number of completion. Amen. Uh, you know, just like Christ, uh, he, you know, it took three days for him to uh, be buried and, uh, and, uh, and be resurrected. And, and you know, in order for us to really come to the light, a death must take place. Amen. And this is the way uh, God works. He, he, you know, he, he revives us. He, he, he made something out of nothing. Amen. Uh, in order for something really to uh, glorify God and to be uh, uh, resurrected in God, he must die first. Amen. Amen. So we truly have to die to uh, our old ways. Not just some of them. All our old ways. Amen. Oh, you know, all those things that we used to do in our own understanding, amen, because to follow God, it really means to submit completely and let him take control, amen. amen. So, um, the, uh, so we see the Saul, while he was on the way to Damascus uh, with his own agendas, uh, encountered Christ, and this whole experience changed completely his agenda, and now he had a different agenda, which it wasn't his anymore, it was God's agenda, amen. amen. But uh, there still needed to be a preparation. There still needed to be a process. So he was blind for three days. And once he made, finally made it to Damascus, not on, not on the horse and not on his own feet, but because uh, the rest of the men that had experienced this encounter took him uh, over here to Damascus. He couldn't go himself. Man, he, he couldn't see. And once he got there, um, you know, uh, you know, he's in this place, you know, just praying and everything he already come to the knowledge of, you know, the true God, amen, and, uh, and, and God called his name Ananias, amen, and, uh, and we see in the chapter, uh, I believe it's 10, uh, where's the uh, book of Acts, Acts 9, 9, uh, we start at 9. Amen. 
So uh, in chapter 9 says, and he was dead, uh, talking about Saul of Tarsus, and he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. So we see that this guy was not, he just couldn't see, but he was completely out. He, he, he couldn't even eat or drink. He was fasting, amen, and, uh, and he, he was completely separated for these three days from all his surroundings. And for most of this uh, stuff, they, they usually um, distract you. You know, all this, uh, you know, that's why it's so important that we saying we don't focus on a lot of things. A lot of times, the visual stuff can distract us. You know, but but we he said the just the, the just to live by faith. So we don't walk by by what we see. We walk by by faith. But those things that we cannot see, amen. And uh, because we recognize uh, there is one that disguises himself as an angel of light. And he's a light himself. He, he can be like your face. He disguises himself as an angel of light, amen. So um, he's in control of all the visual stuff in this world, all this all this tangible stuff in this world. Say. Amen. So we want to make sure that we give no chance, amen, to distract us or to deceive us. Amen. But we want to have the discernment of God so we can go beyond what we see. A lot of times we don't see things that is going to confuse. It's very important that we don't go by the first thing we see, but we, we consult God right away. Because when God calls you, even though you've been prepared, you might not really understand the reason why He's calling you for a certain purpose. But if you, if you go beyond what it looks like, if you go beyond what, how this situation might appear, right. and in faith, you consult God, He give you an answer. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So see, here it says that he was uh, doing that type of preparation. He, he couldn't see. He was separated from all this type of stuff. He couldn't see his surroundings. He couldn't eat. He couldn't drink. So his spirit could be stronger. And in chapter, in chapter 10, in verse 10, it says, and there was a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. So he called him by his name. And he said, Behold, I'm here, Lord. You know, and when I read this, it tickled my spirit, amen, because um, uh, here, here we see that God called Ananias by his name. See, it's important that uh, when situations like this happen, that there is somebody that is ready. For God, Amen. Amen. It's well. You see, see, this happened all the way in, in the way to Damascus, from Rome to Damascus, and all the way on the other side, where these Christians have fleas and everything, and they were frightened. They all knew about the atrocity that Paul was prescribed, and there was this one person that was ready, Amen, just waiting for God to call. See what it says here when he called Ananias by his name. He said, "Behold, I'm here, Lord." So he doesn't say, "I'm here, Lord," or oh, "Lord, what you want?" Oh, Lord, I don't know. Well, let me get ready. Hold on. Hold on, Lord. Let me get ready. You know, I, I wasn't really expecting you to call me or, or to consult me for, for this particular um, assignment. But he said, behold, and this, and this word by itself, behold, tell me a lot because uh, as, as I'm reading and meditating on this, I'm thinking, when God calls you by your name, just let you know, sight, I'm here. Just in case you thought that I wasn't ready, just in case that you saw that I was lacking, just in case that uh, because of this, all this stuff that I've been going through, because all this stuff, because I've been under attack lately, behold, I'm still hanging on. I'm still here. I'm still waiting for you to call me for this assignment. Amen. So, um, so here we say is, uh, behold, I'm here, Lord. I, I emphasize on that word they they added. They saying, behold. Saying, look, Lord, I'm here. Don't, don't look too far. You know, think about when somebody um, is looking for you. And um, and you just tell them, behold, look. You're looking everywhere. I'm right here in front of you. Amen. So I thank God that Ananias was prepared. And he was ready uh, to, to respond to the calling of the Lord at that moment. But then in verse 11, we see that it says, And the Lord said unto him, Arise. And go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed. And he seen in the vision a man named Ananias coming in and put his hand on him that he might receive his sight. 
So we know in the journey of, of, of Apostle Paul how important it was uh, for him to, to be converted. Amen? But look how God had already laid the whole plan here. Even before, before Ananias uh, responded, even before uh, he called Ananias, he had already uh, planned how everything was going to go. He had already heard uh, this praying of, of this guy that had just been converted. But he heard his prayer. Amen. And, uh, and, and, and as soon as he heard this prayer, he called Ananias. He was like, wait a minute, I heard somebody praying for me. But I'm going to need you to go to that spirit which is called straight. Amen. 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 To contribute to this plan. Amen. So thank God because Ananias was obedient. Amen. Even though uh, in, in chapter 13 it says, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of these men how much evil he had done to the saints of Jerusalem. So now, you know, you know, that's what I was talking to a brother there the other day, and you know, a lot of times it seems like, you know, we are attacked from this angle, from that angle, and we get that human, that little human moment. Just a moment. But, you know, don't you think, you know, like we say, <clears throat> you know, that tree that is just standing there, you're never gonna see the tree that when the wind blows, it doesn't matter, it's, you know, the, the wind might not be blowing so hard, but some leaves, something on that tree is still going to be animated. It's going to move a little bit. There's no tree that's just going to be standing still and all the leaves still like this. You know, but it's so, so when that storm comes, it's going okay for that tree to bend. Amen. But then, when that storm is gone, then you just bring back up. So it's important that we are saying, so God, we recognize, sometimes we're going to have that human moment, but the important thing is not that we stay, we stay down or that we break up. But they, when when everything is done, you just stand back up, amen. And you and you recognize and you let them know I'm still standing. I'm not broken, amen. So, amen. So here, amen. Thank God. So um, so here when it says, oh Lord, I heard of this man. He's been prosecuting this church. I heard of all the stuff that he's been doing to the Christians. He 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 just been putting people to death in, in jail. I heard of this man. I don't, you know, pretty much saying, God, I don't know about what you're asking me. I'm not sure about this. So um, so he had that human moment when he was doubting the calling of God. Amen. Amen. But uh, well, God was uh, faithful and, and, um, and, and merciful enough to let him know here on verse 15. It says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto, him, unto me to bear, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So he's pretty much, he lay out an eye on, you know what, don't worry about it, I got this. You just do what I'm telling you to do. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and, and as soon as, as the Lord responded, he he, get, he got a hold of himself, he was like, yes, Lord, I'm just going to do your will. Amen. But it's important, you don't know how, right here, how important it is for us to be prepared for when God calls, because now after, uh, uh, all these uh, letters the Apostle Paul wrote, wrote to the churches, they've been left for our record, um, for our, in record for our benefit. It, uh, you know, we see how um, how much Ananias, the, just the fact that Ananias was uh, faithful and responded to the calling of God, how it impacted uh, the life of the Apostle Paul in, in the ministry. Amen. So, I think God today because uh, there's many Ananias even here in the Bible Temple. Amen. That, uh, are ready, are getting ready, amen. And you be preparing themselves when, for when God uh, uh, calls, amen, for, for an assignment, amen. So it's very important that we stay or stay on our post, amen. It doesn't matter sometimes, uh, you know, and these days, uh, you know, the enemy is just distracting uh, with, you know, keeping everybody busy with just uh, the cares of this world. With, you know, work and stuff. And a lot of times, especially the teaching session, we look around and like, well, it seems like not many people over here. But you know, not everybody that is not here, it's not because they don't want to be here. Amen? So the people they have to work, you know, this stuff, they come up. Amen? But the enemy's gonna come and try to trick us talking about, look, everybody's falling away, nobody wanna be here. Amen? So it's very important that we stay on our post and we count ourselves blessed, those that can be here. Amen? Knowing that God's been merciful enough not to allow no distraction Amen. To keep us from, from giving him what's due to him. Amen. And also pray for those who, are, who want to be here, but they can't be here for, for distractions and all the things that take place. Amen. So it's very important that we are, we are not distracted by what mine looks like uh, or, or what the situation might be. 
but really in, in, in every uh, situation, consult God in faith, knowing that He knows what He's doing. Amen. And He, he knows what's best, not just for our life, but for everybody as a whole. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So, um, so I thank God because uh, as I speak to you today, I've been attacked from all angles. Amen. And I'm not going to talk about it because I'm not going to give you no glory. But, uh, <laughs> but um, and, and you know, some, some of us know uh, the lot of things have been going on. But uh, but I thank God because uh, we might have a little bit of moment. It might seem like we're about to break. But uh, Apostle Paul said that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. So, <laughs> so actually, he recognized the closer, the, 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 the more persecutions he went, the closer he brought him to God. Because God told him, in your weakness, I'm, I'm made strong. So the more he suffered, the closer he is. See, think, think, people you think they're going to do you some, they could do you some harm. When, uh, when, when Jesus was crucified, there was two beside him. There was two criminals. One of them, they believe. He was like, oh, if you really the son of God, you, you come down. You know, do. He, he was trying to see something tangible. He was like, well, show me. <laughs> he wanted to see. But the other one, in faith. He was like, hey, when you come back in your kingdom, don't forget about me. Talking about there, just please don't forget about me. He believed in that moment. So uh, Jesus told me, today you will be me. I very say to you, today you will be me in paradise. He talked about, no, wait, I wait till you come. No, he said, today you already have a reservation. Amen. Because I'm already being prepared for you. So amen. So I think that in that very moment when you believe, when you choose to believe in God. Right there in that moment, you already have your place secure in paradise. You don't have to wait till he comes back. Amen. Glory to God. So, so I must have probably realized the same thing. When he had to put himself on the guillotine, he said he was about to be cut off. See how much this guy went through, but these people thought he was they were going to do him harm because they were focused on the physical. But Apostle Paul said he gladly went over there and gave it to God because he already knew. He wasn't even in the, pressing in the body anymore. He was already over there. Because he's he recognized. Um, my place is already reserved. We got. So it don't matter what you do to me out here. I'm not even here anymore. <laughs> Amen. My, my spirit is somewhere else. My body might be here. You might do something with the body. But it's not, it's not going to do me no harm because I have no use over it no more. I already have a reservation somewhere else. I'm going to live somewhere else. So. I thank God that uh, we as, uh, as true believers can be translated in that way that no matter, no matter what it looks like or no matter what happens out here, our spirits already have some reservations somewhere else. Amen. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. 